All right, as promised, we're back here at Tom Crutchfield's place, and today we're gonna learn a little bit about the tree crocodile, the crocodile monitor. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. Guys, so right now Tom's showing me his crocodile monitors. He's become, uh, he's had a few of these in the past, but in recent years he's gotten back into them. And right now he's just showing me how he works with them. Uh, but a few things that you need to know about this lizard is it's the world's longest lizard, okay? Longest, not heaviest or largest by mass. And the other thing you need to know about the, what's very famous if you're a reptile keeper about these animals is probably the worst bite you're ever gonna get from a lizard in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm gonna Tom, get bit by a venomous Gila monster by far. <clears throat> okay, so Tom, talk, us, talk to us a little bit about what we're looking um, at here. These are very interesting uh, monitor lizards, you know, or varanids as we call them. Uh, they're the longest of all living lizards, uh, reaching at least 12 feet long, and there are stories and unconfirmed reports of lizards that are 16 feet long. These also are found on a lot of islands off New Guinea. But the, well, hold on, they're arboreal. They're right? arboreal. So think about a 14 or 12 foot long lizard above you in the canopy. Mm -hmm. With oh. teeth, with teeth even more formidable than a Komodo dragon. Yeah, and the reason uh, being is because they're because arboreal. They're arboreal. It's like an emerald tree boa's teeth compared to a boa constrictor's teeth. They're catching birds out of the sky sometimes. And they're also catching tree kangaroos and cuscus that have all that loose skin. So you're saying through evolution, so they have longer fangs. Right, exactly. Not, no, they don't have fangs at all. They have teeth. They have teeth. So, so through evolution, basically, and an adaptation of this arboreal lifestyle, they have longer teeth so that when they do grab something, it it's you know easier for them to subdue it. It just makes catching animals in the treetops a lot easier. They, and you were talking about the, some of the prey items they eat have a lot of loose skin and fur. Yeah, like tree kangaroos and cuscus and yeah. some of those things. Also, too, the... Uh, the speed of these puts any other monitor to shame. Really? They are so much faster than a Komodo dragon or any other uh, monitor that I've ever seen. I mean, they, they, they're they incredibly fast. Okay, can I come in with you? Yeah, you come in. All right. Yeah. Now, Tom is... This, this was cold Tom, last night. Listen, I fed him yesterday. Too. Tom, our camera, my, my buddy Tom, he's always been a little skittish around large monitor lizards. He's just become friendly with my guy, Slinky. That's um, okay, I think I'm faster than both of you. Yeah, yeah that's all you need to be. You just need you to be the least... You, go ahead. You, you're not as fast as this lizard, though. If no. really specifically <laughs> but but it's just not going to try to hurt you anyway. Right, but, but you just need to be the least slowest. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that would work. Yeah. All right, so... Kind of like in bears. So, you know what? Talk to me a little bit about this enclosure you've designed for them. Okay, well, we made these enclosures eight feet tall because, of course, they like to climb. If I made the cages 25 feet tall, they'd probably be happier because they yeah. do live a lot of times pretty much in the canopy for the most part. Uh, and that's where they hunt everything. They have a very long, rounded tail as opposed to a flat tail like right. other monitors. Uh, and uh, pretty much there's not much known about these in nature. Nobody really, really knows too much where they lay their eggs. I suspect, I, I suspect that they probably lay eggs in termite mounds in the trees because some other species of monitors do that. Okay. And it's, that's the reason that these would. Uh, but I don't know that they do. But you can uh, kind of call this a tree monitor in well, a set. Well, it is a tree essence, monitor. You know, uh, just uh, not I like... I mean, you see where it is. It's right. as high as it can right. possibly. They rarely ever come to the ground. Huh. They just don't. These are nest boxes oh, we built. Oh, look at see, this. that's all dirt. Notice the design of the box. If I make the box where it closes here and you accidentally drop it, you could, you could cut the tail or break the tail. But when you do it like this, that's not going to happen. Right. From the bottom. That's smart. And see inside of this, we have, uh, it's filled almost completely up with soil. Okay. See, she's been, or somebody's been digging in there. Maybe this other female bow is grabbing, I hope. Nice box, it looks nice. Door, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. And that's just it with, with reptiles, you know, something Tom said to me before we really were friendly, years and years and years ago, he was talking to someone else and what really got me um, stoked on Tom was the fact you mentioned to somebody who goes just got to watch your animals just sit back be quiet and watch yeah they'll teach you all you need to know about they tell they, they they tell you everything you need to know yeah. you just yeah. have to understand their language right exactly because it's nonverbal communication with these animals go ahead buddy um, but basically Hello? he's gonna have to take this call so I'm gonna I'm gonna Hello? dive right back <laughs> in oh. 
Hey, Bill. So, this is really cool to be in here with these guys. Um, Bill. You know. Bill. What's his name, Bill? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bill. Now, are you doing, why are you using the phone, Tom? Because I'm afraid to put my hand up there and think it's food, but he's curious, very curious. So I want him to be curious without biting stuff to be curious. See, he, he, he likes looking at this. He's not sure what it is. Yeah, he gave you a little hiss. Yeah, it scares him a little bit. So I, what I'm doing is learning his personality. And, and when I first come in, too, if he sticks his head over, I'm going to let him taste me. Okay. And I know that sounds stupid. Okay, you're going to let this monitor that can bite your hand off, lick your fingers and taste it. Yeah, I am, because I want him to know I don't have anything in my fingers at all. There's no rats. Right. And there's no reason for him to bite me. And I'm not going to do anything with my hand to make him want to bite me. Okay. It's not that he wouldn't bite my hand, but he's not going to bite my hand by accident. Gotcha. And I should mention, this is years of knowledge. You know, Tom's been working with large reptiles for many, many years, from crocodiles to giant snakes, yeah. and of course, to monitor Venomous lizards. Snakes, Have you been snakes. bitten by one of these guys before? No, never. No. By any big monitor, any big lizard. Right. Well, I've only ever been bitten once with a venomous snake handling one, and that was here the other week. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to get hurt by stuff. You know what? I like them. And they always like me. Unlike most of my friends, I don't have. I, I'm doing my memoirs kind of now. I uh -huh. don't have any memoirs where all these animals hurt me because they didn't. Right. <laughs> gotcha. not, not, not ever. Well, that and being it's not said, because I didn't do it. Yeah, but that being said, I just want to make sure some yeah. of the younger viewers out here who maybe don't have the expertise don't try to duplicate right. even what you see me do because I'm doing it only because I understand what the animal is thinking. Because of the way the animal acts and its behavior, without it is knowledge. And the great difference between fear and appreciation is knowledge. And it's yeah. also, if you assume stuff, it can get you really hurt. Gotcha. And these are wild animals. When things go south, animals don't go south. The person with the animal goes south. Copy that. Right. The There's nothing just cool being about being animal. bit. There's nothing, There's great nothing cool There's, about you're, being you're bit. You're not handling the no. animal right then. In all right. my years, I've been bitten once with a venomous snake handling it. Gotcha. I've been bitten twice through a bag. I don't want to get bit by stuff. And that's I in how many years, farm. would you say? How many uh, years? Well, I'm 69 years old. So, um, 55 years at least. There you go. So, you know, that's something we always try and impress on the show is we're not trying to cowboy it up, although I like cowboy hats. But um, what I was also going to say is when he lets the snake use his tongue to taste him, uh, excuse me, lizard, uh, to taste him, it's a similar thing and a similar bonding that I did with my water monitor. Now, they're different animals, but there are certain behaviors that, that cross over. Mm -hmm. And so the first wow. thing is, what I've noticed, and tell me if you agree, is I create and give the animal a large enough space to where I can go in there and if he doesn't want to be right near me when we're becoming friends he doesn't have to be but I can still enter his environment and I can move around it and do what I have to do and, and have an out for him okay and then after that their natural curiosity which is what you're trying to do here exactly. starts to get peaked and they begin to realize oh they're bringing me food I get a positive reinforcement through this. I like having this guy visit because I usually get a treat. And now, right. Slinky and I, well you met Slinky, yeah. you came to visit a few years ago. That animal and I are buddies now. It, it crawls up on oh, me, yeah. he lets me pick him up, and he I knows I'm a good guy. Yeah. You know? I, I, honestly, every single big rocky iguana here, the right. genus Sakura, mm -hmm. we can put out in the yard and leave and for the day. Yeah. And come back, and it'll be trying to get back in the cage to go to sleep that it lives in. Yep, gotcha. This crocodile monitor right here, Jimmy, I've known long enough that uh, she uh, will follow me around the yard. Uh, she's trained to go in when it's cold. I feed her. Uh, I pinky right out of my finger. She crawls up on my shoulder. I put my coat on because we're claws. I walk to the building, put my coat out. She walks in the cage she stays in, and I then feed her again to reinforce the behavior. You don't even have to catch her. Wow. So as so, far as the croc monitors, what's your goal here uh, with these animals? I, I'd like to learn more about them. Nobody, uh, the, the reproductive strategy of uh, Rhino salvadori is very poorly known. There have been a few people that have bred them. Two of the people that have bred them are close friends of mine, and they've helped me a lot to, talking to me about this. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy named Ron St. Pierre has bred them. And a very old friend of mine uh, in both chronological years and uh, regular years, Stan Sheris, okay. uh, uh, he, he bred them a number of times. Uh, wow. uh, in fact, he bred a, a group of 2.3 together, you know, for a number of years and that. So, so I just really like them and I, uh, they're super intelligent lizards. They're perhaps the most intelligent lizard I've ever worked with, maybe. 
and I've worked with a lot of kinds. Okay. And the main reason is I really, really like them. There you go. In fact, I like them so much, I'm probably going to go to New Guinea just to see them and how they live. That's so and cool, And I never man. thought I was going to go back to New Guinea Well, again, maybe we'll go I take that I trip, am. man. Maybe we'll take that trip we'll with come. you. We'll come. there. We'll go with you, Tom. <laughs> so there you go, everybody. A uh, little bit about the tree crocodile, a little species profile here on this episode of Camp Kennan. As always, I want to say thank you to Tom for opening up his home. He really loves to share his knowledge. And, you know, I enjoy being here and sharing it as well because not only do I learn, but I get to have you guys come out and learn too. So I just want to say goodbye and uh, before I do, head on over to the Camp Kennan Army and hit subscribe and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Camp Kennan. Thanks so much for your support. Tom, thank you once again, buddy. I, I think Tom's an official general. In yeah, the Army. he's a general, he's the admiral. admiral. He's one of the admirals out there. So thanks a lot, Tom, I appreciate well, it. Well. Very cool, we're gonna go grab some lunch now and hear some more fun stories. Yeah. Talk to you guys later. All right, I'm gonna have to run. Yeah, let's go, buddy.